everybody. It's very, it's my honor to be here to talk to you at, uh, at OnSite and also the scholars at GLOBE. I'm going to talk about a nature-based solution, but put in the context. So human being, since we exist on this earth, we've been always thinking about our relationship with nature. We are part of it, we are trying to conquer it, but also trying to live with harmony, with live in harmony with nature. And this, in the past, because of our, our um, information channel, we are, our understanding is very local. But in, when human beings flow into the uh, universe, when we look back to the home that we are in, this blue marble, we realized one thing, that nature is not unlimited. We've been acting as if nature is unlimited. Nature will provide as we need, but nature provides what we need, but cannot provide what we are greed for. So living in harmony with nature, how is that? And this has been uh, our uh, thinking in the past many, many uh, generations. So if we put the life of Earth, which is 4.5 billion years, into 24 hours, then guess when the human being come into picture? Just the last few seconds. But in just the last few seconds, look what change we've made on the Earth. We, our temperature is closing to the 1.5 degree. There are scientists telling us if we go over, we're going to have a more detrimental uh, disasters that we cannot really handle. We are close to that limit now. <laughs> at the same Thank time, you. look at the biodiversity, look the world around us. We used to have really rich the birds, you can see the trees, but you see more of them converted for the needs of our food, which is needed, yes. But also, because of climate change, our beautiful ocean is so depleting. You can see the bleaching of the beautiful coral. If we're going this way, there's going to be no future for us. There's no harmony we talk about. Look, how do we see us and the nature, the development? What do we see? If you think about the floor of a room, the floor is our social foundation where we need education, we need food, we need a voice in the political uh, stage, we need education, we need housing. That's the social foundation we cannot go under. At the same time, we also have a ceiling. That ceiling is the ecological limit. That's where the, how the nature can sustain us. That means biodiversity, the, the pollution you can put in the air, the chemical use, the climate change. Climate change by far is the biggest threat we human being has made to our own survival. So the only space in between, which is really between the ceiling and the floor, is the safe and the just space for our own development. And that's where we should be in our future. Currently, if you take the pause of what's going on around us, most of the indications going to the wrong direction. If you look at climate change, climate change, greenhouse gas emission going up. If you look at biodiversity going down, over the past 40 years, WWF has been tracking the Living Planet Index. We only see they're going down. We didn't see any trend now, them coming back. So this is the situation we are. But the next 10 years is the time we can do something, and we have to do something, because we, you, we are the first generation really understand what kind of situation we are in, what role we have played to nature. We are also the first, maybe the last generation that we can do something before it's too late. So therefore, in the next 10 years, we like to see we need to bend those curves. We need to see carbon emission going down, biodiversity going up, and that's what we need to do. And this is, this pandemic has given us a wake up call. Think about pandemic is most likely become the, because of zoonotic diseases. Zoonotic means the disease coming between human and animals. And then this wake up call telling us that human, we are in the intertwined crisis. The crisis is coming from climate change, from nature loss, from human health. And this is the time we really rethink what is the nature to us, solution, challenge. I think we are talking about this is the solution to us. And this is also time to think about what is the sustainable development mean to us? What is the foundation for that? In the past, the SDG, sustainable development, has been considered as a three circle, 
If you remember in your textbook, uh, economic uh, environment and the social, right? They when they inter interact each other, the middle one, which uh, containing all three of them, that as no development. That is true, but not accurate. Because if you look, at this is the more accurate one. You see, the biosphere is the foundation of all our life, all our social system, all our economic system. From nature, we become, we form a society. Human being form a society. From a society, from the, before you just you know fetch pick. And then you become, you develop markets, then economy coming up. So they are not really the equal. Nature is the foundation for everything. And nature provides solution to us. As uh, uh, Professor Li Zheng has mentioned, nature-based solution has, is not new, but it's also not old. It's only in the past 20 years, people start to realize what is that nature-based solution we are looking for. Um, the, Mr. Li Zheng has just mentioned many things. I just say a few things. Nature-based solution, uh, by the definition of IUCN, has, uh, which WWF is a part, is a member. I think China is also a member to that. Talk about its actions, actions that protect, sustainably manage, and restore ecosystem that are natural or modified, that addressing the societal challenges that Mr. Li Jin just mentioned, seven of them, climate change, mitigation, adaptation, uh, natural disaster, risk reduction, uh, socioeconomic development, food security, water security, and the degradation of the environment and the biodiversity loss. That's seven of them we need to tackle. And they are, they are supposed to be at scale, but bringing the benefit to human being and the nature at the same time. So if they don't, they only do one way, that's not really the nature-based solution. So that's, that's a definition that currently launched by um, July by IOC in just past few months. There are criteria, you know, when you, I think you, those in the um, in young scholars, when you go out of university, when you try to design the nature-based solution, this is what you look into. What is the criteria of nature-based solution? First of all, they have to really address the societal challenges. I mentioned all seven of them. They have to be designed at scale. You can, uh, they have to really get net gain for biodiversity positive, you know, have to be positive at, at the end. It has to be is economically feasible, involved with in inclusive governance, including the people who, who use, you know, have the right to use or own the land or biodiversity they are using, have to be balanced, the trade-offs between the immediate gain or the long-term gain, or immediate investment and the long-term gain, uh, that we have to balance that. Have to be adaptive as we go. Most importantly, has to be mainstreamed and sustainable, meaning you can go forward. That's a nature-based solution criteria. So if you do one day design the nature-based solution project, that's something you look into. Um, there are so many cases. Um, uh, Mr. Li Zheng just mentioned about nature-based solution com compendium that China and New Zealand led, uh, many of them. I just give a few that uh, you, can, you can see. Um, there are in Switzerland, so they spend about 150 million uh, Swiss francs, which is equivalent to US dollar, a year to protect. That's a protect cases. So think about Switzerland. When they issue their forest law about 150, 60 years ago, by now they have developed. Switzerland is one of the very developed countries. They still now have more living forest than when issued forest law almost like 200 years ago. And that's really you protect, you benefit, you benefit more. Just one case. Then restore, talk about China case, Lois case, Huang Tu Gaoyuan. That's since 1994, China started. And by in 10 years, we saw the income of household increase 300%, three times more. Then the vegetation doubled. Vegetation doubled means that you have a carbon sequestration capability from tree, vegetation, but also from land under it. That and then you have about 2.5 million people getting out of poverty. And then the green production per capita increased 61%. So this is really, you see this multiple dimension of benefit, not only just covered the, the oasis is not yellow anymore, it's become a green, but people get out of poverty and the nature coming back and the carbon also being secreted. So this is a case. Then there's another called sustainable use in Bogota in Colombia. What they did was that they put about a four million, um, they put um, 
There are 8 million people in the city that taking their water from the national parks. Yeah? So, and then they have a trust fund built to attract voluntary contribution to subsidize the conservation to, of the watershed. Eventually, they actually have about $4 million per year saved from a water treatment because they don't need water treatment. They can use through the conserve of the water to benefit people. So those are just three cases about protect, restore, and sustainable use of natural resources that can bring the benefit, economic benefit, social benefit, and a nature benefit. And that's just a few examples. Nature-based solution has, nature has been, I guess, never ever high in the political agenda. Because the crisis we're facing, because the science has told us, because we're waking up. So this year, in September, just like two months ago, we have observed the first ever high-level biodiversity summit attended by 124 countries, and there are 65 head of states speaking in that summit. Never before. There's a one summit before. There are about five head of states speaking. Now, now we have a 65. And then I knew at that time, head of states has really to get themselves into the agenda because it's very crowded space for speaking. But that's just one signal to show that nature has become so important, so high in the political agenda. At the same time, there are a group of countries coming together. They develop a leader's pledge for nature, united, take united action to reverse loss of, bi of biodiversity by 2030 for sustainable development. That leader's pledge covers 10 areas. Then you can see on the left of the screen, it covers, talk about green and just recovery, because we are in the crisis, we need to recover. Recover, not go back to business as usual, have to be green and just uh, fair recovery. Then talk about ambitious global biodiversity framework, which could mean if no pandemic, we would already see the global biodiversity framework agreed in Kunming in the past few days. But pandemic has put everything uh, backwards or sweep, uh, sweep us out of our feet. But we still need to have ambitious global biodiversity framework to cover nature so that we can provide the solution for the societal challenges, including climate change. I don't list every one of them, but you notice the nature-based solution climate change is also high up in that 10 um, uh, 10 categories. So uh, in the next few minutes, actually two minutes, I want you to hear what the world leaders has talked about, has think about it. If you can play the video, please. Thank you. Our planet is in a state of emergency. Biodiversity loss is an urgent threat to health, food supplies, and livelihoods across the globe. Both climate change and the loss of biodiversity have devastating consequences. Estamos aún a tiempo de revertir la espiral de destrucción biológica en que vivimos, adoptando medidas urgentes. The interests of our peoples and our planet have never been more strongly aligned. We want a real common movement for change. Now is the time to act. I endorse the leader's pledge for nature. I endorse the leader's pledge for nature. And commit to take urgent actions. Urgent actions. Urgent actions. So that the United. 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 We can reverse biodiversity loss. By 2030. By 2030. For sustainable development. I endorse, I endorse the leader's pledge for nature. 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 For sustainable development. We have a duty to preserve the biodiversity of life on Earth, as conserving nature is not just a moral issue, but it is also a question of survival. We must turn these words into action and make the changes we need to achieve them. Let us all put our hearts together to protect and help heal this planet before it is too late. We must make post-2020 biodiversity framework a turning point. Our health and the health of our planet depend on an equitable carbon neutral future where we value and protect our natural spaces. It is not the judgment of history I fear the most for that of my children and grandchildren. I call on all leaders to rally around this cause and rapidly move towards this transformative change.
these are the countries who currently their head of states or head of government already signed up to the Lisa pledge. And they have made their call. They are calling for us to take action, action now, to find solutions from nature for societal challenges that we are facing. And it is time now for us to think about how can we be the force actually implement that. And their call has been supported by many other non-state actors and thousands of them. But now I think it, it is us and you, because you are the future decision maker. The action, the, de the action you take, the decision you made, will determine the future we, you, will have. So only to look for our future, only if we all work together. Together, it's possible for us to go for a carbon neutral, nature positive, and the equitable future for all mankind on Earth. With that, I thank you.